The world of web browsers has changed pretty rapidly since the first one was created back in the early 90s. It doesn't seem like that long ago when we were all using Internet Explorer 6 on Windows XP. But nowadays, Internet Explorer is more of a laughing stock. Microsoft eventually replaced it with Edge, which comes pre-installed with Windows 10 today. And Google Chrome currently reigns as the most popular web browser in the world. But there's another pretty popular web browser that us Windows users don't talk much about. In fact, it's the second most popular browser out there, according to StatCounter. Of course, I'm talking about Apple's Safari, the default web browser on macOS and iOS devices. And for most of its history, it has remained exclusive to Apple platforms. But did you know there was a short time when Apple developed a version of Safari that ran on Windows? Yeah, it was a real thing. It was completely free to download and it looked very similar to the version on OS X. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through its history. We'll be exploring what made Apple release their browser on Windows in the first place and then kill it off only five years later. Let's get started. It all began at WWDC 2007. The first iPhone had been announced only five months earlier, and Apple had dropped the computer from their name in an effort to better represent the variety of products that they create. The conference that day was focused primarily on the new release of macOS X, Leopard, which was set to debut in the fall. But there was one more thing for Jobs to talk about before getting off stage, and that was Safari. Steve discussed the current state of the web browser market. At the time, Safari had over 18 million users, all of whom have Macs, of course. But even with that many users, it only made up 5% of the total web browser market share. The vast majority of people used Internet Explorer, and this makes sense because it came pre-installed with Windows, the most popular operating system in the world. So for Apple to expand Safari's reach, it was clear that they were going to have to make a version for Windows, and that's exactly what they did. Jobs announced that the latest version of Safari 3 would be available not only on Mac OS X, but on both Windows Vista and Windows XP. A public beta was released on the day of this keynote, and made available for download on Apple's website. Even though it was the first version for Windows, it used the same version number as its Mac OS X counterpart, making it Safari 3.0. Unfortunately for early adopters, a critical vulnerability was discovered in this public beta, which could allow a hacker to gain access to your Windows PC. Yeah, not good at all. Apple patched this vulnerability in a dot update that came out a few days later. For the first nine months of its existence, Safari for Windows was in beta. The overall design of the browser largely resembles Safari on OS X, and this is pretty cool to see. At first glance, it honestly looks like you're running a Mac application on Windows. Everything from the window design to the menu bar to even the about box look just like what we see on OS X. Apple also brought over some elements of the Aqua design language, mainly buttons and scroll bars, which are seen when browsing the web. And the design of the bookmarks manager is similar to the Finder. And in typical Apple fashion, they consider the tiniest of details. The circular outline when hovering over bookmarks, the animation when dragging a tab into its own window, even the flyout animation you get when adding a new bookmark, it's all there. The first version to drop the beta label was 3.1 in March of 2008. The overall design of this version is identical to the beta release we just saw, though it obviously contains many under the hood improvements. It wouldn't be until 2009 when Apple completely redesigned the Windows version of Safari. Version 4.0 completely got rid of the Mac OS X design language, and in some respects it kind of made it feel like a downgrade. The silver title bar is replaced with the regular Luna theme here on XP, and the aqua visual elements are completely gone. It essentially looks more like a Windows application. This was probably done to make the design of Safari fit in better with other Windows programs, which makes sense. The first version didn't even really look like a Windows program at all. But I found that unique. It was pretty cool to see a program with OS X's design language running on Windows, but I guess it could confuse some people who were used to how Windows looked. Even some of the animations we saw in the first release are gone. Now when you add a bookmark, you just get a static pop-up window, no flyout animation like before. Though the design of the bookmarks manager still resembles the finder, and you can scroll through them in a cover flow like interface. But the largest feature introduced in this release is the top sites page. 
This gives you a bird's eye view of your 12 most recently visited sites. You can also pin sites to it to use the UI as a launcher of sorts. The address bar also got revamped, replacing the blue bar loading animation with a pinwheel on the right side. These changes were implemented in both the Windows and OS X versions of Safari to keep things consistent. Apple updated Safari once more with the release of version 5.0 in 2010. On Windows, the design we see is just like the previous version, though the blue bar loading animation has returned in the address bar. This version introduced Safari Reader, which is very useful when reading articles online. It simplifies the page into something you might find in an ebook. Ads and any other links have been removed, leaving only the content of the article and any inline images. This feature is still present in modern versions of Safari, even on iOS. Two years later, Apple would release the last version of Safari available on Windows, version 5.1.7. Once again, the design is just like what we saw in 5.0, but it does pack some new features, one of which is Reading List. This lets you save web pages to a list located on the left side that you can come back to later, kind of like a temporary bookmarks bar. This is still a feature in modern releases of Safari. You can also set the browser to restore your previous session when you launch it, and easily remove history and other data from the settings menu. Both of these are very common features to have in modern web browsers. And that was it for Windows users, because with the announcement of Safari 6.0 at WWDC 2012, there was no mention of a Windows version. Afterwards, it was discovered that all references to the Windows version of Safari were quietly removed from Apple's website, and eventually the official download link was completely gone. This obviously did not affect Mac users since the browser was already pre-installed, and updates were distributed through Apple's software update. It essentially was Apple's way of saying goodbye to Safari for Windows after just five years. So why did they do it? Well, we can't know for sure because Apple never issued any sort of announcement saying that they were ceasing development on the project. But it's probably due to a number of reasons. For one, Safari for Windows probably didn't increase the browser's market share as much as Apple had hoped. By 2012, it only held about 7% of browser market share. The other reason is likely Google Chrome. It was rapidly becoming the most popular browser out there, eventually taking the number one spot from Internet Explorer in the summer of 2012. So I guess it wasn't worth it to Apple to keep the project going. Either way, Windows users who were using Safari had to switch to another browser, and most of them probably went to Chrome. Which, by the way, actually uses some Apple-developed software, as its browser engine is WebKit. Yeah, it's kind of funny to think that a browser that became more popular than Safari used the same browser engine. Eventually, Google forked WebKit to create the Blink engine, which is used in modern versions of Chrome. But that's not to say Safari isn't doing well these days, even if there isn't a Windows version available. Like I said earlier, it is currently the second most popular browser out there, holding just over 19% of worldwide market share. But most of this market share is, not surprisingly, from iPhone users. As if you only account for desktop and laptop computers, Safari's market share drops to just under 10%. Though it still beats Firefox by about 2%, so that's something. But there you have it. That's a look back at the history of Safari for Windows. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.